Okay, you're going to see me uh, recording an episode of my podcast. If you'd like to download the audio for this, uh, just check the link in the description. You'll be able to find the page for this episode on my website. This is Luke's English Podcast. It's a podcast for learners of English. My name's Luke and I'm an English teacher from London. I've been teaching English for like ages and I've been doing the podcast for about eight years. You, I mean, let's be honest. If you're watching this, you probably know about Luke's English Podcast already. If you don't know what Luke's English Podcast is, uh, what my podcast is, then just check the link in the, in the description. It will take you to my website. Okay, um, and that's where you can download the audio for this. Uh, the audio, obviously, the, the audio podcast is also on iTunes and, you know, you can find it on the internet. You've heard about the internet, right? Don't need to explain it. Okay, uh, right then. Okay, let's get started. So I'm just going to start now. I'm going to play the jingle and then it will be sort of the, the podcast will actually be happening for real. Okay, there's not enough time for me to mess around and give you a rambling introduction on the video because I'm sure I'm going to give you a fully rambling introduction in the uh, at the beginning of the episode itself. Anyway, all right then. So uh, let's get started. And here is the jingle. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello everyone, welcome to Luke's English Podcast. How are you doing out there in podcast land? I hope you're doing all right, uh, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Um, I'm actually videoing this one. So if uh, you check out the website, if you check out the page for this episode or just simply visit my YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to see a video version of this podcast. So you'll actually be able to see my actual face and my actual mouth moving while all the words are coming out. Um, if you want to watch it, you can. It's available on the on, on the internet. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this episode is... Uh, I don't know what this one's called. I might call it like a ramble meeting or, a, or ramble news. Ramble news with Luke Thompson. I think I might call it something like that. I haven't even decided what the title of the episode is. I think it's going to be... Uh, what number... Oh God, number two, uh, number four hundred and twenty-nine, something like that. Um, what was the last one? Uh, yeah, I think this should be episode four hundred and twenty-nine if all goes according to plan. Um, but we will see. And in this episode, I'm just going to kind of, I'm basically, I'm just checking in on you, really. I'm just checking in on you, just to see how you're doing. Um, just checking you out. How are you? Are you all right? It's. It feels like it's been a while since I recorded an episode where I'm just checking in on you and just kind of um, giving you some bits of news, doing a little bit of podcast related admin and answering a few comments and questions from the website. Okay. As I said, I'm videoing this one and you should be able to see the video on the page for this episode on my website or just check it out on YouTube on my YouTube channel. Um, I occasionally I do this. I record videos while I'm doing the podcast, and I might do this more often. And I'll I'll talk more about uh, more about that later. If you are looking at the video, you might be thinking to yourself, "Oh, have you grown a beard? Are you growing a beard?" That's what people keep saying to me because I have uh, I have a beard at this moment in time. Um, it's my kind of Arctic explorer look. That's what I've chosen to look like at the moment. I'm looking like a sort of Arctic explorer from the 1920s or something. Basically, I've got a beard. And people keep saying to me, oh, if you are you growing a beard? Are you growing a beard? And the, my answer to that is, well, I'm not really doing anything, to be honest. The beard is just sort of coming out of my face of its own accord. It's not really something I'm actively doing. Because how do you do that? How do you grow a beard? You just don't do anything, really, do you? So really, it should be like, oh, are you not shaving at the moment? That's probably what the question should be. Are you growing a beard? As if, as if like, you know, you can force the hair out of your face. Yeah, that's right. I'm growing my beard just in the evenings. I just, I just sit around and just go, just force the hair out of my chin. No, I'm not growing a beard. Although that is the question that people always will ask if you turn up at work after like a week off or something and you've got a bit of a beard, people will be like, oh, are you growing a beard? No, I'm just, yeah, that's right, I'm growing a beard. I'm just <laughs> pushing the hair, <laughs> pushing it out of my face. Um, are you growing a beard? Uh, the other thing is also, oh, are you growing your hair? 
you know, when someone sees that you your hair's got a bit long, they might say, are you growing your hair? Again, it's the same thing, really. It's, it's not really possible to grow your own hair, is it? Uh, it just comes out on its own. I think I've made my point about that. But anyway, that is a thing that people say. Are you growing your hair? Are you growing your Are you growing a beard? Um, I, I I went to school uh, where I work um, the other day, and I went into one of my classes, and it was the first time I'd seen my students for a couple of weeks. And one of them in my class, one of the students in my class said, "Oh, you're wearing a beard." Um, he's French, um, so you know, give him a chance. He's only He's French, so it's probably... Maybe that's what they say in French. I don't know. But anyway, uh, are you wearing a beard? It's like, yeah, I'm just wearing a beard. Or just just let me just take it off. Uh, sorry, I forgot to take my beard off. Um, anyway, so I do have a bit of a beard, and it's my Arctic Explorer look. Um, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, experimenting with having a beard. Because I thought to myself, well, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker... Qui-Gon Jinn, they've all got beards and it's sort of worked out for them. Maybe not for Qui-Gon Jinn, but it seemed to work out for the other Jedis. And after all, I am a Jedi, as I've established on this podcast before, so I think I should have a beard. Okay. It's one of those episodes. It's one of those episodes where I'm going to ramble on about some stuff. In fact, here is an overview of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in this episode. So there will be actually some some content, not just me rambling about having a beard and Jedis and things. So here is an overview of the stuff I'm going to talk about. So there will be some news, some admin, some language tips, and also some bits of rambling, no doubt, uh, in this general order. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Lepster get-togethers in Moscow and Tokyo. That's groups of uh, podcast listeners who've been getting together and socialising Um, creating these little meetup groups in Moscow and Tokyo. I'm going to give a little report on on a couple of those meetups. Uh, Also, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of uploading Luke's English podcast videos onto YouTube. So I'm just going to kind of talk a bit about that as well. Um, I'm going to give you a quick reminder and just give you a basic overview of the Transcript Collaboration Project. Um, I'm going to have some fun playing the podcast at different speeds. Um, All right, so that I'll come to that. Uh, I'm going to respond to some recent comments from the website and other places like Facebook and stuff. Uh, There will be a question about phrasal verbs with in and on. A general update about a phrasal verb a day. um, And also some recommendations for self-study books on pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. So I'm going to talk to you about um, some good books that you could get if you're interested in finding self-study materials. Um, Also, I'll probably say a couple of things about some upcoming episodes of the podcast. Uh, And there might be a song, if there's time. Um, YouTube viewers can see there's a guitar in the background. I might play a song, if I feel like it. Uh, But that won't be until all the way at the end of the episode. So if you don't want to hear me singing, no problem. You just, like, stop watching or listening when you get to that point. Um, All right then, so a lot of the things that I'm reading, a lot of the things I'm saying to you are written on the page for this episode. I did a bit of preparation. It it sounds and looks as if I'm completely unprepared, but actually I have written some stuff down here. Uh, So uh, you can check out a lot of this stuff. Uh, on the page for this episode. Again, if you're watching YouTube, just click the link. If you're not watching YouTube, if you're just a normal podcast listener, then I think you know what to do. Go to the website, check out the episode archive, look for episode 429, and uh, there you will see, um, you know, text uh, that I'm reading from. So if you want to be able to read a lot of the things I'm saying while I'm saying them, you can do that. If you want to later on go back and check out some of the words that you heard, you can do that too. Also, if you're transcribing uh, this episode as part of the transcription project, don't forget to check the page for the episode because some content, some of the text might already be written there and you can just simply copy it into the Google document transcript and that'll save you time. Um, So let me start by talking about uh, Lepster get-togethers, okay? Uh, Lepster get-togethers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Uh, so this is um, these groups of listeners who have been meeting up and socialising. Uh, and we'll start with Moscow. So listeners to this podcast in Moscow, every weekend they get together 
in these cool places, these anti-cafes, where you can pay a fixed price and then you get as much tea, coffee and cake as you can stuff into your face. Om nom. It sounds brilliant. You just go in, you pay your money. There's my money. Now give me cake and biscuits and tea. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? I don't think that's how you do it. I don't think you need to be as gung-ho as that when you go into an anti-cafe. There's, your, there's the money, just throw it down. Now give me cake. Um, anyway, they get together in these places, uh, which seem to be perfect places to, places to socialize and to speak um, and drink tea and coffee and stuff like that. Um, and uh, they, they do this every Sunday. So if you're living in Moscow and you want to get together with listeners to this podcast and speak English and practice your English and socialize and make some new friends, um, then you can see a link on the page for this episode, which will send you to the Facebook group for the Moscow listeners. Okay, and that's where they post the news of the, the latest meetups and stuff like that. Uh, and on that page, you can see also pictures of the places that they've been hanging out in. And they look like really cool places. One of them apparently has got like a, a, a sort of a fish tank, you know, the, a glass tank, um, a, a tank uh, with, with a, a lizard in it. Brilliant, right? So even... Uh, if you get if you get sort of fed up of speaking English, you can just look at the lizard for a while. You wouldn't, of course, you wouldn't get fed up of speaking English. Uh, but anyway, regardless of that, there is a lizard in a glass box. Just which <laughs> not only is there cake and coffee and tea and cookies and friendly people to talk to in English, there's a bloody lizard in a glass box. What else could you what more could you want? And I say in a glass tank, I said in a glass tank, and that means like an aquarium, you know, the sort of glass box that you keep fish in, with water as well, of course. You don't just keep fish in a box without water, they would die. So you have to put the water in. Not with a lizard, though. Oh, dear. Does this make any sense? Am I making any sense? I don't know. Um, so uh, I actually spoke to some of the um, the Moscow lepsters who got together um at a meetup on Sunday, I actually spoke to them. We had a Skype call. Um, one of the guys, one of the members of the group called Alex uh, sent me a message on Sunday because it was his birthday. Uh, and he asked me if I would be willing to talk to them for about 10 minutes on Skype. And um, so I said yes, because I wanted to, you know, wish him a happy birthday. And also because uh, I thought it might be interesting to, you know, have a little chat and just to see what it's like at, at one of these meetups. Um, so that's what happened. And I, I just sat here and I spoke to them for about 10 or 15 minutes and I recorded the conversation. So I'm now going to play the recording to you. Um, and um, the, I saw a brief moment of video, but then they switched the video off because they wanted to try and get the, as much uh, quality in the audio as possible because they were on a mobile network. But I did see a quick look at it and they were kind of crowded around the picture and you'll see that uh, someone mentions that it's it looks like they they were doing doing the conversation from a russian sauna or something but they were just crowded around the phone um now i'm going to play the, the the recording for you i mentioned that thing about the sauna just because someone mentions it and it might clarify uh things for you okay right then so i'm now going to play the recording of me talking to lepsters in Moscow, and here it is. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. I can't see oh, you. I, we didn't switch the video on yet. Ah, yeah, right. Not... You can see me, but I can... Hello there. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. 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 Hello again. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, no, do not offend anybody. Let me switch the video off because you're not that interested in us, right? And, uh, well, I don't know how to situate my phone so that everybody is in the picture. All right. That's okay. You lovely. can video. Lovely, lovely. I'm quite interested in you. Additionally, we are forced to use the mobile network, so... So the video off might improve the sound quality, I believe. Okay. okay, yes. So how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, how are you doing? Very great. You know, with the video, you look like a captain or something. Yeah, that's right. 
I'm I'm going for a kind of um, Arctic explorer kind of look. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like a, a, a an Arctic explorer or a submarine uh, captain. Great. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I I believe you should make more YouTube videos. Yeah, you think so? Really? Yeah, because you look good. I wrote you in the comments once. You look good in the how to say in the frame. Is there such an expression to look good in the frame? Uh, yeah, I'd say you look good on camera or uh, what's the word for it? Yeah, you look good on, I guess you look good on camera. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thanks. I should do more YouTube videos. It's true. And in fact, there are lots of uh, YouTubers who do sort of learning English videos who are doing very, very well. They get sort of hundreds of thousands of, uh, of views. Um, and so I should do it more, but I'm kind of, you know... Just stuck in uh, to the podcasting thing, and that's that's what I tend to do. But uh, yeah, maybe I should get my face on camera a bit more. You know what, Luke? That might be a silly idea, maybe. But uh, if you would record the podcast as you regularly do, but also at the same time uh, put some camera on and mm. record the thing mm. and uh, put it on YouTube, yeah, maybe yeah. that gives you a chance to. You know, it would require no additional efforts from you, but yeah. at the same time it would uh, help to reach much more audience because, you know, even among teenagers and young people, not everybody knows what podcasts are. Mm. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, I should be doing that. I really should. Um, what I do, what I have done in the past is uh, recorded uh, videos of myself doing the podcast and I've, I've just put them on the, on the website. And they haven't really had many views because I guess not that many people are visiting my website. You know, really, they people who visit the website go there because they want to, you know, read text and, and leave comments and things. But um, I, I don't then publish those videos on YouTube. They just end up on the on the site because I'm sort of I sort of yeah. think some, I think to myself, I'd like to try and get some of my audience to come to my website, you know, but I should probably yes. just put them on YouTube and that would get more more audience yeah probably probably because you know the genre of talking heads as i call them mm. is growing mm. so people are more interested in somebody's thoughts more than in some graphic i mean visual mm. uh part of content mm. Mm. Okay, let me give other guys the chance to ask you something okay okay or give any comments sure Oh. <laughs> you know they're hesitating. <coughs> Don't worry, just everyone, just relax because you know it doesn't matter. I, I mean, you know, I, I've, I'm just as nervous as you are probably, which is not very, <laughs> which is not very nervous. So, hello, Luke. That's fine. I'm Nick. Hello, Nick. Okay, uh, I would ju just like to thank you for what you're doing, um, helping us in the group. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Another, somebody else. And I also want to thank you for this reality which you bring to us. As without you, we would have never met together here. <coughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, that's true. we have new friends and they are real. Oh, well, that's very yeah. nice of you. I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you're getting together. That's really cool. Sona in a Russian sauna, but we are not actually. <laughs> <laughs> you should maybe sometime, you know. You could change the location. You could meet up in different places. You could... Uh, I don't know if getting together in a sauna would be awkward. <laughs> There's only one girl. Yeah, she'd probably feel a bit uncomfortable, to be honest. So probably best not to do that. Just to... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Are you telling... Look, look uh, one technical question. How do you find the sound quality? Of this, of, of, of you now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a little bit sketchy. Uh, it's not too bad. I can hear you and everything, but it's it's a little sketchy. There's a bit of hiss, I suppose. That's okay. Just, but it's all right. It's it's not too bad. I guess you're on a mobile connection, so that's why. Yeah, it's we not... are, don't have the professional equipment like the microphones and so on. Well, I have one, but in this case, I would hear you in my headphones. That would be stupid. Yeah. I mean, other other people wouldn't hear you in that case. You'd have to like explain every. You'd have to repeat everything I'd said, and then. A lot of it, you know, who knows? Who knows what, how you would uh, uh, interpret uh, what I was saying? Probably correctly, based on, on the English that I've heard you using. <laughs> Alexander, that's... Yeah, I'm talking to Alexander there, right? Yes, uh, well, there's a group of people, right? But my voice, this one, is uh, from Alexander. Okay. Actually, I'm being called Alex. 
Alex, really? Oh, it's very formal of me to call you Alexander, isn't it? To give you the full name. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, well, do you want us to describe what kind of situation we're in right now? I'd like to know what you're doing. So I, I can see from the, the bit of video footage uh, that I saw a moment ago is that you're sitting around the table. I guess you're in one of these anti-cafes, right? Yeah, you can, have, you can have free tea, coffee and cookies here. Brilliant. But uh, on the occasion of my birthday, I prepared... <laughs> I prepared another surprise for the guys, and uh, tacos and burritos are coming. Tacos <laughs> in and about, burritos. Yes, really. Yeah, in excellent. about 20 or 30 minutes, we're going to have a feast of Mexican food. Right, right, great. That's brilliant. So you get like all the different types of food there in, in Moscow, I guess, right? You can get all kinds of international food and stuff. Exactly, but I only recently discovered the Mexican one. So, you know, uh, I'm a little bit overweight, and it helps me not to gain more weight. Really? Uh, because, you see, it does not contain dough. Uh, it consists of tortilla, which is very thin, a very thin piece of bread, right? And the 95% of the content is just meat and vegetables, which, right. which is good. Right. I like, the way uh, I like the way you're justifying it to yourself. That's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's what... <laughs> You got me. Right. <laughs> when it's your birthday, you can have anything you want. You know, you should have burritos and uh, tacos and all the other types of Mexican food that you can get. Are you having tequila as well, by any chance? Oh, God, I forgot to think about this, Luke, you know. But, you know, I'll Google, I'll Google something, uh, and maybe nearby there is a good pub where mm. we can go all together. Yeah. Maybe there's... I don't know. Do okay. The interruption, there is uh, some Russian guy rushing into the room to take one chair away from us. All oh, right, I see. Typical, eh? Bloody typical. With one chair short. Yeah. Oh, you got, what, someone standing up now? Yeah, the lady. Sur surprisingly, no, she's got to, you can't make her stand up. She's got to be the one who sits down. At, you know, one of the gentlemen there in the room should at least give up his chair to her, No. Right, right, we'll think about that. Anyway, I, you, can do, you can do what you like, you know, you can do whatever you want, but uh, who, am I to, who am I to say who should sit down, who should stand up in this crazy world? Have hmm? a look of you, a picture of you. I mean, actually, I'm lying on the table to have a picture of you. You're lying on the table now? Yeah. <laughs> leaning, leaning over the table. Leaning, leaning. leaning over the... Oh, right, I thought you were kind of like lounging across the table or something. <laughs> Why not? Make yourself comfortable, you know? Make yourself as comfortable as possible, within reason, you know. Okay, so what are you doing today, then, in, in the, uh, the get-together? Are you going to play a game? Uh, yeah, we are going to play a game. It's called Mafia. Uh, maybe you're not familiar with it, because it's not popular worldwide. It's, it's called Hitler, uh, Secret Hitler. Really? Secret yeah. Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Look, I call it Mafia, and they... The principle of the game is that there are some guys who are gangsters and then other people, or well, other people are normal people, normal citizens. And uh, the, you have to persuade all the players that you are not mafia, you know? All right. So it's a psychological game. I see. How do you... Uh, I don't want to and waste too much of your time, right? No, I'm curious. But, I'm curious. I'd like to know. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, mafia kills people at night, so-called night, when all the players close their eyes. And Mafia wins if all the people are killed before Mafia was discovered. I see. Okay. Wow. It's very complex. It's pretty, pretty dark as well, isn't it? But it's a fun game, actually, you know. Uh, and it's, it requires a lot of speaking. So that's why we actually, chose to try it. Exactly. Yeah? It is speaking. Exactly. Yes, it is a speaking game, entirely speaking game. Okay. It sounds good. Uh, you, sh you should write to me and tell me exactly how to play it because, uh, you know, if... if 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 it works, I could use that on the podcast or something. You know, you could you could uh, listen I'm to. A, it. Yeah. I'm afraid it's possible to play with three people. Ah. It requires more than five, I guess. Oh, I meeting. see. Ah, well, maybe but that would work. When you come to Moscow, we can. Have, <laughs> we can have it by the way, by the way, uh, we are all curious to know: Are you having any plans on? visiting Moscow one day. I don't actually have any plans in the diary right now, but I would very much like to come. The thing is that I've got like several projects that uh, I've decided I have to prioritize. So I have to finish those things first before right. I can start 
taking trips to, to places and, and doing things like that. So it's on my list of okay. things to do. Reveal, reveal the secret to us without giving any promises. Uh, what period of time would you consider <laughs> the need to finish those projects? Oh, God, I don't know. I'm, to be honest, the whole project is completely overdue already. I was supposed to have finished it some time ago, but I've been, I've been so busy growing a beard that, uh, yeah. that you know, it's, that's taken up all my time. I, can't, I don't know. I honestly don't know what the time frame would be because I can't, I don't want to put some sort of arbitrary time frame on it and then right. and then not not meet that time frame so i can't really i can't really say that at this stage sorry you know i don't want to give you some vague time notion um because that's, uh, we, uh, that's uh, not um, really fair to you yeah, what do you think if we can come to london to, 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 to france yeah to paris i tell you what though i'd love to come and i'd love to you know get together with everyone and i'd like to do a bit of a show i'd like to do some stand-up if i if we yeah. can get some people in the room awesome. and then and then i don't know just whatever else you know just some sort of q a session yes uh, exactly q a plus stand up plus some rambo chat maybe yeah definitely yeah yeah that would be good some story some storytelling some all sorts of stuff you know little 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 show of, of some kind but no, I've got I've got to get my uh, got to get my other stuff finished first before I can do that. Uh, okay, look, one thing one thing I need to say mm -hmm. um, is that I used your recommendation, your promotion about iTalki. Ah right? yes, and uh, it really helps my accent, mm. as you probably might hear. Uh, well, you don't know what accent I used to have, mm. but I believe it's becoming better over time. Good. Uh, I picked a tutor who's not too expensive. He's from Newcastle. Yeah, uh, and he's great. Uh, we wanted to thank that uh, to thank you for the recommendation and uh, recommend all of other listeners of uh, your podcast to try that out because you know it usually works like this. You keep hearing some advertisement, and you think to yourself like, "Oh yeah, I might might have a chance to check it out later," but you never do. Mm. And I I like regret all the months of hearing this ad and not using it. Right. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm good. I'm very glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that um, that it's working out for you. I, I think it's very good. Okay, look, I'll leave you with the guys and I'll get grab the tacos and burritos, all right? Okay, look, I'm going to have to go because we've got some people coming around to buy our table. Wow, congratulations. So we've got to have to, I've, I need to take the table apart uh, okay. so that they can get it out of the apartment, you know. I'm going to have to... Uh, bid you all farewell in order to take apart this table um, but it's very nice to talk to you and I hope you have a really good session and enjoy all the burritos and tacos and and uh, and I hope that the the speaking game goes very well I look thank you I look forward to reading about it on Facebook okay very soon thank you very much happy thank birthday as well Alex thank you thank, thank you. you bye 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 bye, bye. 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 <laughs> Okay then. So that was me talking to the group of listeners in in Moscow. Um, it seems like usually the group has got about I don't know nearly ten people in it every Sunday, which is you know again not that many really considering I think the number of people I have listening to this podcast in Moscow. Um, but you know you could they're a nice bunch nice sounding group of people and apparently they they didn't know each other before they started uh, getting together like this and they've made friends with each other so you know why not go along and uh, join them and have fun apparently after uh, apparently they've been playing speaking games you heard them talking about this game called mafia there which sounds like a, a good laugh um but also they've they've been playing the lying game as well which you know from episodes of this podcast with amber and paul and the lying game is just always good fun um, so why not go and join them and get involved in some of the games and see that lizard in a in a in a glass box the, the lizard in the tank in the fish tank uh, at least <laughs> um, right I'm obviously impressed by that I don't know if you'd be impressed by that anyway um, so I wanted to just say a couple of things after that one of them was um, so at the beginning Alex was saying 
Um, he, he said I look like some sort of captain, like a submarine captain or something, or like a fisherman. I could be. I'm making a big deal out of my beard today. It's not that impressive. Um, but he said you look, uh, you look good in the frame. That's the phrase that he he said, which is you know a nice phrase. I understand what that means. Um, in English, we would say the camera. You, you look good on camera, or we would say uh, the camera loves you. Um, I don't know if that's true. I think that the camera likes me. I'm not sure if the camera loves me. The camera's sort of like, you know, doesn't mind me. Let's say that. Uh, but there is a phrase. That there are several phrases. You look good on camera. The camera loves you. Or the expression photogenic. If someone's photogenic, it means that they, they look good on camera. You know, those certain, certain people are just really photogenic. In normal life, they look kind of ordinary. Take, take a picture of them and somehow just... You know, they just sort of dazzle uh, on camera that you describe those people as being photogenic. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so talking about YouTube videos. Oh, and by the way, I did not ask Alex to say that thing he said about italki. I didn't tell him to say that. He did that completely independently, completely off his own accord. So that's nothing to do with me. But of course, it's great to, to hear that it's a success and... Uh, that, you know, there are plenty of people like him who've started using italki and are finding it really, really useful. And if you haven't considered using it, you might want to have a look at it. It, it could really help you. Um, and, you know, Alex said that it's helped him and it's helped him it helped improve his accent and stuff like that. And if you imagine regularly speaking to someone in England is probably going to help, isn't it? I mean, it, how could it not help? Um, so I wanted to talk about doing YouTube videos because Alex there was... Um, saying that he thinks that I should, you know, do more YouTube videos and that uh, that um, I look good on camera and things like that. Um, so I'm now just going to talk about a sort of advantages and disadvantages of doing YouTube videos. So in terms of advantages for, like, for me, there is a much bigger audience on YouTube. Um, and as Alexander said, uh, many people still don't really know what podcasts are. Even sort of younger people or teenagers still aren't really aware of what podcasts are. Um, or even how to spell or pronounce podcast, as we've uh, discovered on this podcast before. Because, you know, uh, you know, I see people searching f uh, for my website and they, they spell it like podcats or postcat or postcard or potcat. Um uh, so people can't even spell it either. So um, I guess he's right that podcasting is still a bit of a niche, which I quite like in a way. I like the fact that, you know, if you're taking the time to find these audio episodes, to get them on your phone and then to listen to them, it probably means that you're the sort of person who is sort of really motivated to listen to something like this and therefore that you'll like it and that you're probably my kind of audience, you know. Uh, and YouTube, on the other hand, is full of lots of kind of general viewers who might discover my videos without really knowing what it's all about and they might be the sorts of people... They might not be the sorts of people who want to listen and continue watching. I don't know. You know, I shouldn't be too negative about it. I should try and be positive, um, you know, and just remember that there are plenty of people on YouTube uh, who could like what I do. So I should try to do it more. Um, and, I, I, you know, so I plan to experiment a little bit more with doing uh, videos of the podcast. Um, lots of YouTubers... Um, who just do YouTube videos, who just do teaching English on YouTube. A lot of these people get very high numbers of views. Uh, so it could be successful for me. I could reach an even, an even bigger audience, even though the way that I'm doing it today, for example, is not the way that most YouTubers do it. Like, the way I'm doing it is I've just got a camera running while I'm recording the, the, the episode, and... Oh God, I'm now messing with the camera, trying to get the right position. Most, uh, I've just got a camera running while I'm doing this. And as a result, I don't know what it's going to be like to, to, to watch this. I mean, you, the, uh, doing the audio is different because you can just listen to this while you're walking around. But uh, with video, I feel like there's more of an emphasis on the visuals and stuff like that. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, so if you're, if you're viewing this on YouTube right now, let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think of the experience of watching me record these these videos is um uh, disadvantages video for me is a lot more complex it's a lot more inconvenient and much more time consuming to produce uh, it takes up way more storage on my computer 
and it takes up a lot more processing uh, speed on my computer as well. It slows the computer down a lot. For example, if I've recorded a long video and then I stick it in the computer in order to, let's say, edit it at all or just uh, splice videos together or just put it together in some way to, to then upload onto YouTube, it slows the computer down. It takes up all the memory capacity and stuff like that. Um, and I prefer audio for that reason. It actually cuts down the time I have to spend on this and it allows me to just produce more work when I just do audio. So video's a bit of a headache, really, because it's, you know, uh, the video files are so heavy. Um, also, to an extent, video can actually be a distraction from the language, because ultimately I want you to focus on the spoken language, how it sounds, and not to get too distracted by the things that you can see. Um, Instead, I want you to just be able to focus on the sounds. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I tend to focus on audio, so that you can just listen to the spoken English uh, and just focus on that. Um, but, you know, when possible, I will try to video myself doing podcasts. Like Alex said, it shouldn't require much extra effort to have the camera running while I'm talking and then upload the video straight onto YouTube. It shouldn't require much more effort, but we will see. Um, yes. Okay, then. So... Um, another thing that I've been asked about is whether I would consider doing Facebook Live or Instagram Live videos. And I keep thinking about doing that, and I really should. Um, I'm basically in the habit of doing the audio podcast, and that's working really well for me. But from time to time, it would be cool to do like Facebook Live or Google Hangouts or like YouTube Live uh, or something like that, uh, and just hang out with some of my listeners. And some of you at this point will be thinking, but Luke, I don't have Facebook, I don't have Instagram. Um, well, I guess in, for those people who don't have Facebook and stuff, what I would have to do is video myself on a separate camera uh, and then upload that onto YouTube. Uh, you wouldn't be able to watch and send comments live, but at least you'd be able to watch it later on. So that's just a, you know, an idea. Um, so the Facebook page for Moscow Lepsters, uh, you'll find a link to it here. Uh, on the on the uh, page for this episode and uh, or if you're just on Facebook you can search for this Lepster's Moscow Conversational Club Lepster's Moscow Conversational Club and you'll find it there um, what else what else what else um, so uh, Moscow Tokyo as well Tokyo uh, listeners to this podcast are also getting together on to in Tokyo the next time the next meeting for Tokyo Lepster's is, is on the 3rd of March okay 3rd of March um, is the next time the Tokyo Lepsters are getting together and there is a Facebook page for that as well uh, so you can check it out the link is on the page for this episode on my website but the uh, Facebook page is uh, titled the third Lepsters meeting in Tokyo okay so go there and you'll find all the details they're getting together on the 3rd of March at 7 p.m. Um, and uh, yeah they haven't decided the venue yet, but it should be somewhere near Shinjuku. Uh, so check out the page on Facebook and you'll, you'll get all the details there if you want to get together with them. Um, now, I'm still, coming to, I'm still coming to Tokyo in April with my wife. We are still coming to Japan in April. Uh, first and foremost, that will be a holiday because um, I've always wanted to show Japan to my wife because she's never been there. And I haven't been back there since 2005. Um, but I'm hoping to do one comedy gig uh, in Tokyo while we're on holiday there. I mean, because it, it's a holiday, we won't have that much time to do Luke's English podcast related event type things. But um, I'm hoping to do at least one comedy gig uh, in Tokyo, maybe on, on in the evening of Saturday the 15th of April. So um, Saturday the 15th of April is probably when I will do some sort of comedy show in Tokyo, probably part of a, a show with other comedians. So I'll probably get, you know, five to 10 minutes uh, on stage, something like that. Um, anyway, so uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted about that. Um, right, I wanted to say a few things about the Transcript Collaboration. Uh, the Transcript Collaboration is a project um, uh, which is um, being done by a team of listeners called the Orion Team. And uh, basically the Orion Team uh, work together to transcribe episodes of Luke's English podcast, okay? And uh, I just wanted to kind of say a few things about the transcript collaboration again, just because it seems that um, um, a lot of people are, are, are getting 
involved in the transcript collaboration, but they haven't, for example, read the rules and they don't know the, the, the important details. Okay, so um, you can find all the information about the transcript collaboration on my website. Just go to, uh, go to the website and you'll see transcripts and then transcript collaboration, click on that. Uh, so um, basically this works uh, using Google Documents um, and so far about, I think it's something like a hundred transcripts uh, have been produced so far by the team. So they're doing a great job. Um, and uh, so this is how it works. First of all, I publish an episode of the podcast like the, in the normal way. Um, and then um, one of the managers of the Orion team, probably Antonio, creates a document uh, on Google, a Google document for that episode. Now, these Google documents are completely open. Anyone can access them and leave comments on them and even edit them as well. Uh, you just need to be signed into a Google account. So the cool thing about it is that it's totally open. You don't even need to register or anything. You just go into the Google document. You can immediately start working on it. Uh, in the document, you'll find that the episode is divided into three-minute parts, three-minute chunks. So the point is that you don't need to um, transcribe the entire episode. You just transcribe a three-minute section. I'm just pausing the podcast. I've just paused the podcast video. YouTube people, I've just paused it. <laughs> just in order to do that because the light was in my eyes. All right, so let's go again. Uh, okay, so you don't have to do the whole episode. You can just do a three minute chunk, which is a lot more achievable. And the way it works is that in the document, you'll see that there are uh, time codes for each chunk. For example, uh, zero to three minutes, three minutes to six minutes, six minutes to nine minutes, and so on. And what you do is you write your name next to the three minute chunk that you would like to do. For example, if you want to do three minutes to six minutes, just write your name next to that time code, okay? And then you can just start transcribing that part. Uh, you listen to the, the you, you listen to that part of the episode uh, and you try and write down everything you can hear. Um, you'll probably need to repeat it and listen to it again, pause, rewind, and keep going in that manner. And, uh, and that's how you will eventually transcribe your three minutes. So you don't need to do more than three minutes. It's definitely achievable. And with lots of different listeners all transcribing their own three-minute section, the, the, the whole episode gets created, uh, the whole transcript gets created fairly quickly. Um, if, when you're transcribing, if you can't identify a word or phrase or if just something you don't know what it says, you know, if you just can't identify it, you just leave a, a, a space, leave a line, and you can leave a time code next to it. So the time, exact specific time code for where you heard that thing you can't identify. And that will help other people to then, you know, check it out in the episode and write the missing word or phrase in there or to correct what you've written. When the three minute chunk is finished, when you've finished it, even if there are a few gaps that you don't understand, um, you can just write the word finished at the end of your chunk. And then when the whole episode is transcribed, uh, the, the whole script will be added to the finished folder on, on my website. There are three folders. There's uh, unfinished transcripts. Those are the ones that you can go into and write your name next to a time code and start transcribing your chunk. So there are unfinished ones. Once the, the whole transcript has been completed, even with a few gaps and things and question marks, that script then gets added to the finished folder which is there to be proofread okay and other listeners can proofread uh, those documents okay so um, the original plan was that I would be proofreading them but I just don't have enough time because there's so much content so much reading for me to do I just can't do it but it doesn't mean that the whole thing is um, is a waste of time because other listeners who've got a higher level of English can actually proofread those finished uh, transcripts and add missing words and make corrections and so on. Um, okay then, um, you can find all of the folders for finished, unfinished and published transcripts on my website uh, in the transcripts uh, section. Okay, uh, if you if you want to join in, you can just visit the transcript and just write your name next to a chunk and start. 
It's good to stay in touch with the team though. And if you want to do that, you'll there is an email list. Um, and again, I would su just suggest you check out the page, the transcript page on my website, and it'll tell you everything you need to know, including the email address for the Orion team. Um, and that's it, okay? All right. So I just wanted to sort of emphasize that um, anyone could work on it, um, okay? Anyone, you all have access to all of the scripts, including the ones that have been fully transcribed. And if you've got, you know, a fairly good level of English, you could go and proofread other people's work. And that's just a really good way for everyone to collaborate. And you'll find that doing intensive listening like that is actually really, really good for your English. And, um, you know, plenty of people who've worked on the, the transcription project have told me how much they've noticed the, the benefit, that they can suddenly understand a lot more. If you just spend like a good deal of time just trying to identify and, under, and, and word for word uh, transcribe a three minute section, that kind of intensive listening will pay off in your listening ability in general in the future. Okay, so there you go. Um, all right. Actually, talking about sort of uh, transcribing and stuff, one of the things that some of you might do already is actually play the, the podcast at different speeds because many podcast players give you the option of changing the speed of the, uh, of the recording and you can slow it down, you can speed it up. For example, some people, if, for example, if you find it too easy to understand me, if you find it really easy to understand what I'm saying, some people choose to listen to the podcast at a higher speed. Uh, and most podcasting software these days allows you to speak to listen at high speed without it affecting the pitch. So the pitch stays the same. I mean, back in the old days when we had cassette players, if you played a tape at a higher speed, everything would sound really high pitched. And it's like it sounds like a, a chipmunk or something. But now with the digital technology, you can play recordings at a higher speed, but the pitch stays the same, which is amazing. Now, um, I'm going to give you an example here. I'm going to play an extract <coughs> from an episode of my podcast. Um, let's, let's, let's listen to the, the first part of a podcast episode, but at, oh, let's say, um, let's say at two times the normal speed. This is what it sounds like. Hello, podcast people in podcast land. Hello to all the Lepsers in Lepland. This podcast is sponsored by italki, and you can use italki to improve your speaking skills, and your speaking skills are really vital. If you're thinking of using English for any reason in the future, you're probably going to be doing speaking. Listening to Luke's English podcast can definitely help you listening a lot. Wow. So if you feel like I speak too, too clearly, you could try listening to it at double speed. But I don't know if you've ever tried listening to it at like um, a slower speed, like 0 0.5 speed. Uh, it's pretty funny because it sounds exactly like I'm completely wasted. It sounds like I'm really drunk. Listen to this. But if you want to push the speaking and push your fluency uh, further, how drunk do I sound? Isn't that brilliant? So it's better, so, so you become more fluent and more confident. You no, just... Uh, just kind of just you should try speaking in the eye talk. It's just really, really great. You're really gonna like it. It's just, it's really gonna help your English. You need to speak to native English speakers. Just speak to natives. Just have a drink. Just sit down, have a drink. And it's funny when there's other people on the podcast as well. This is uh, from episode 344. Uh, which was called A Totally Terrific Talk on the Terrace with the Tangential Trio featuring Tom Morton. So this is me and uh, Amber and Tom and Paul just talking about stuff, but at half speed, so we sound really drunk. In any case, I hope that you just enjoy listening to another completely spontaneous conversation between a group of Brits group of Brits who are absolutely piss, who are getting really drunk, a bit too much sun on their heads. Uh At sitting on his lovely sunny terrace with Luke and Paul and 
Tom has joined us today. That's right. Usually we have, uh, in these sessions, we, we just... If you're, if you're looking for some sort of, you know, a horse man, like... Uh, <laughs> You know, a centaur. A centaur. <laughs> if you look, if you expect some sort of Harry Potter creature, a mystical animal, you're not going to get it, ladies and no. gentlemen. He is. Uh, to 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 very. I want to find a bit of Paul speaking. It's funny when Paul speaks slowly. Everyone loves the Russian okay. joke now. <laughs> oh, God, not the Russian joke. <laughs> We've got to explain it cult. for Tom. Yes. Yes. Only Tom, 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 Tom doesn't know about the, the Russian joke. It took about five months <laughs> for people to get the joke. So what, what, ha what happened on. was... Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go again, everyone. <laughs> Is it Come not on. take your time? I can't. I'm Russian. No. Mm it wasn't more or less. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's what the podcast sounds like when you slow it down. Everyone sounds totally pissed. Plain anyway. I it mean, is. It's my questions at him. Carpet. Okay then. All right. So I thought you might enjoy that. I think that's pretty funny. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, and where are we? So, uh, right, some comments on the website. Uh, I'm now going to read through a few comments from uh, my website. And the comment section on the website is alive with conversation these days in a way that's never happened before. Um, and that's largely due to a few listeners um, who are like engaging each other in a lot of conversation like Kat and Nick and Eri and Antonio and Jack and Hero and others who've been very chatty there recently but uh, also the comment section is very lively because other listeners who drop in and leave comments uh, which is lovely to see and it's adding some lively conversation and extra content under each episode because people uh, are sharing videos and thoughts and pictures and stuff like that. Um, so uh, here's a joke for example that was sent to me by uh, a listener called Amra and uh, this joke goes like this she said this is after I did an episode about tea recently about drinking tea and she wrote to me saying hi teacher I've just heard a joke and I have to share it with you and it goes like this an Irish tea an English tea and a Scottish tea were all sitting in a teapot together and the teapot said stop being pretentious twats you're all Indian ha 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 um Okay, uh, I was really rushing to tell you that joke, I'll tell you. Uh, um, here's another one about language, right? Not a joke. Uh, this is an actual genuine question about language uh, from a listener called Frank, who uh, sent me a message asking about the expression in on, okay? Um, and Frank said to me this, uh, Luke, would you do me a favour? Can you sometime um, explain the usage of the expression in on? I don't know... I don't know in what cases it's appropriate and why it's used in that way. The last time I came across it was when I watched the first episode of Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy, that TV show about doctors. Uh, the young doctors who came fresh from the university to the hospital in Seattle to work there were welcomed by the director with the, with the words, Each of you comes here today hopeful, wanting in on the game. Uh, and this expression is a little bit confusing to me. Usually we have, uh, we use in or on in a sentence. Yeah, we do. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember the other example I've seen. I hope this makes more sense to you. Thank you for your effort. Okay, Frank, I think I know what you're saying. Basically, Frank wants to understand how uh, we use in on and what in on means. And that quote from, um, uh, from Grey's Anatomy was... Each of you comes here today hopeful, wanting in on the game. Um, okay, then. Um, I think that I can actually play you part of that speech from Grey's Anatomy now. Doctors, the game. Each of you comes here today hopeful, wanting in on the game. Wanting in on the game. So he's, this guy's American, so he he's pronounces it differently. I would say wanting in on the game, and he says wanting in on the game. Each of you comes here today hopeful, wanting in on the game. Wanting in on the game. So if you if you are wanting in on something, um, it just means that you want to be 
included in something. You want to be involved in something. You want to be part of something. You want to be in on the game. You want to be part of the game. Okay. To be in on something. Now, uh, <clears throat> to be honest, Frank, um, in on, just the expression in on doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's it's all about how those words in on combine with other parts of the sentence. Um, at the beginning of the episode, um, at, at the beginning of this episode, I actually said to you, I just want to check in on you and see how you're doing. Did you notice that? Did you remember that? Um, <clears throat> I want to just check in on you and see how you're doing. Actually, I've video people, I've paused the podcast again. You know why? Because this camera, you, you're running out of battery and I need to plug you into something. So this is a bit of an emergency. <laughs> See, apparently it's no extra effort for me to do these videos, but it's a bit of extra effort, to be honest, because I'm kind of like, oh, it's, there's a lot more stress involved when I'm doing the video. I have to be honest. Because with the audio one, I'm a bit more relaxed because no one's watching me. But like with this one, it's like Big Brother is watching. The whole of YouTube is watching. And it's kind of stressing me out a little bit. That's probably another one of the reasons why I don't always do these videos. Because of the technical stuff. But also just the kind of... There's a bit of stress of just being constantly watched by a video when you're doing something. Um, and, you know, you, my audio podcasts are pretty long. But that kind of works on audio because... You know, people can, as I've said before, people can go around taking the train or the bus or whatever. But on video, I imagine you're just sitting there watching this. And, you know, earlier on, when um, you were listening to that recording, I was just sort of fannying around, going up and down the stairs, drinking water and things like that. God knows if anyone is watching this. Um, I need your feedback on these videos. Let me know what the whole experience is like. Um, because my episodes get... A lot of downloads they get listened to quite a lot um, and the, per the the reason I'm saying that is because if the ratio between the number of people who watch these videos and the number of people who listen to the podcasts is not good enough then it's not worth doing the videos for example if I don't know if a thousand people watch the video but a hundred thousand people listen to the episode then you know, I'm not sure if it's worth all of the headache of, of doing all of this technical stuff and the stress of being being looked at all the time. Uh, but, you know, let me know. Let me know what your experience is. Maybe what I should do is just um, do shorter videos that are just for YouTube and put them up sometimes. And then the audio ones are just audio. But, you know, um, well, I'm experimenting with this. And, you, you know, you can just let me know what you think about that. But right now, I need to plug you into a power source um, otherwise you will die. Okay. And we don't want that. Headphones off. Here we go. The drama, the excitement. Will, will I manage to get the power supply connected before the battery dies or not? Let's see. Okay. All right. Okay. I did it. Oh my God. That was so dramatic. How dramatic was that? Okay, let's let's get back into this question about in on. Okay. So don't focus on in on. You, you Really, you need to focus on the whole expression, check in on, like check in on you or check in on someone. Um, or in the case of the, the, the Grey's Anatomy video, uh, to want in on something. Okay. Um, so... This is not about the meaning of the prepositions in and on, but it's about the meaning and grammar of verbs like check in on. OK, now check in on. I'm, this is the example I'm using. I'm just checking in on you. Uh, some people say that this is a phrasal verb or a multi word verb or an intransitive prepositional uh, phrasal verb. To be honest, we could spend ages trying to categorize this kind of grammar or vocabulary to get exactly the correct term for these slightly different types of verbs. And there are many different names in different books for these types of verbs. And I guarantee that if we did spend loads of time defining what a phrasal verb is and what they should all be called, it will just give you a headache, all right? Uh, phrasal verbs are notoriously difficult to understand from a grammatical point of view. And as a result, people don't really agree on what to call them. 
you know, type one phrasal verbs, type two phrasal verbs, separable phrasal verbs, non-separable phrasal verbs, transitive or intransitive prepositional verbs, intransitive, non-separable, idiomatic, particleized verb phrases. Let's just call them bastards, okay? Let's just call them bastards because they are bastards, aren't they? Phrasal verbs, absolute bastards. Certainly when you encounter counter them the, for the first time properly. I mean, you know, they're difficult and they're tricky. So they can seem like right bastards if you're learning the language or if you're trying to teach it. Um, because when you encounter phrasal verbs, you know, they can seem horrible, almost like evil, cruel parts of the language. Um, of course, once you get beyond that feeling and you learn a few phrasal verbs and get comfortable using them, they become less like bastards and more like just slight bastards. You know, just a little bit, slightly bastardish. Bastardish isn't really a word. Okay. Anyway, then, you know, once you learn more about them, they, they, they're they not really bastards at all. And eventually you can call them your friends. Um, and in fact, if you think about it, you're already friends with some phrasal verbs, like, for example, take off, give up, shut up, carry on, find out. You probably know all of those and you've discovered that they're not really that bad. You know, that they're, they're the friendly phrasal verbs. In fact, they're pretty cool phrasal verbs when you get to know them. And, you, you know, you develop a sort of deep respect for them after a while um, to the point at which you can call them bastards again. You know, like the way with people. You call people bastards if you don't like them. Oh, he's an absolute bastard. You bloody bastard, you know. But then when you love someone and they're your really good friend, you can also call them a bastard, like, but in a good way. Like, oh, you, how are you, you old bastard? Come here, you bastard. Give me a hug. How have you been, you old bastard? By the way, you shouldn't call people a bastard unless uh, they really deserve it. Um, okay, it's a rude word. Anyway, in on. Let's have a look at in on. So the phrase that you quoted from Grey's Anatomy, Frank, was each of you comes here today hopeful, wanting in on the game. All right, then. Now, the phrase to want in on something means to want to be part of something or want to be a piece of something, to want to be involved in something. Um, OK, and um, in on. Uh, there are a few other phrasal verbs that include the words in on. Check in on, uh, want in on something. For example, I'm putting together a team for uh, I'm putting together a team of people for a bank job. This is not true. It's just an example with some phrasal verbs in it, okay? I'm putting together a team of people for a bank job. We found out that a hundred million dollars in diamonds is being delivered to the bank next month and we're gonna take it. Okay. We've got an inside man at the bank, everything's been cleared, security's been paid off, we need a driver and some muscle to carry the bags and take the money to the safe house. Who wants in? Who wants in on this job? Okay, there you go. Who wants in on this job? So to want in on something means to want to be part of something or want to be involved in something. Now, uh, other phrasal verbs also have in on as part of the phrase. Like, for example, copy me in on any correspondence. To copy someone in on an email means to include someone in the email chain, to, to be CC'd, uh, okay? Uh, I want in on this job. So that, you know, that means you want to be included on the job. Are you in on the joke? To be in on a joke means to be included in the joke, to understand the joke. Like, let's say, for example, you're playing a practical joke on someone in the office. Uh, you, let's say you've glued all of the person's pens and equipment to their table. Right, it's a really annoying practical joke that you're you're playing on someone in the office. You've glued all of the stuff to the table, so it's all stuck. The pens are stuck. The computer is stuck to the table, um, and you know some of the other people in the office are in on the joke. That means that they um, they know it's happening and they've been uh, clued up. They've been informed it's happening. The guy whose desk it is is not in on the joke. He's got no idea it's happening, and he comes and sits down, and he's like trying to move everything and then he realizes that he's stuck to his own chair as well and then you will laugh at him uh, but some of the people in the office are like <laughs> because they're real they're all in on the joke uh, they're all included in the people who know what the, the joke is happening um, here's another one it took me ages to catch on to what he was talking about uh, oh no that's that's not in on is it that's not in on that's catch on to all right um, here's another one I'm just checking in on you as I said before, to check in on someone 
means to uh, like just to, it basically means to check someone, but it also suggests visiting someone in order to check how they're doing. And it could also be used for phone calls, like bring, 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 bring. Hello, hi, yeah, it's Luke. I'm just uh, just checking in on you. How's everything going? All right. So it could be used on the phone, but you can imagine someone coming into an office. You know, you're working, 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 working on a project, and and do do do. Someone comes in, opens the door. Hi, I'm just check, just just thought I'd uh, check in on you, just to see how everything's going. I'm just checking in on you. How are you doing? I thought I'd just check in on you to see if you need anything. Okay, so these mainly, if we start to categorize them, they're probably intransitive phrasal verbs with a dependent preposition. <sighs> what are you going on about, Luke? Well, okay. Now, verbs in English aren't always one word. Sometimes they are two or even three words. Okay, we have a lot of verb phrases, basically, also called phrasal verbs. They're just they're, they're like normal verbs, but instead of being just one word, they can be several words. Um, and just like normal verbs, some phrasal verbs are intransitive. Intransitive means that the verb doesn't need an object. Okay, so you know, in a sentence, you've got subject, verb, object. Okay, um, subject, verb, I like pizza. I is the subject, like is the verb, and pizza is the object. And like is a transitive verb, that means it takes a subject. You can't just say, I like. Because if you say, if you just say, I like, then people are going to think you're weird because like needs an object. You can't just go, oh, I like. Unless you sound, you, you know, unless you want to sound like Borat, you know, Borat, I like, then, you know, you shouldn't say, I like. Uh, I like something. I like it. I like you. I like pizza. I like uh, jokes, whatever. So like is a transitive verb, but some verbs are intransitive, which means that they don't need an object. For example, the verb comment. Would you like to comment? You know, uh, would you like to comment? Um, uh, participate. I'll participate. I'll, I'll participate in the bank robbery. You see, in order to add an object to that intransitive verb participate, you need a preposition uh, in. That's a dependent preposition. It adds an object to a, to an intransitive verb. Other intransitive verbs, ob object. I object. You know, he strongly objected. Like, what did uh, what did Jeff think about the proposal? Well, he, he strongly objected, actually. Okay. Um, and complain as well is another example. What did she think? Well, she didn't like it. She complained. All right. Um, so they're all intransitive verbs. And if you want to add an object to them, then you have to use a preposition, a dependent preposition. For example, comment. Would you like to comment? Would you like to comment on the game? So comment on. Uh, participate. I'll participate. I'll, I'd, I'd like to participate in the workshop. Participate in. Participate in the bank robbery. Object. She strongly objected. Uh, she strongly objected to the decision. Okay. And um, complain. She didn't like it. She complained. She complained about the changes. So comment on, participate in, object to, complain about. Okay. Um, and so, you know, these are intransitive verbs that take a dependent preposition when you add an object. And this works with some phrasal verbs as well. Like, for example, copy in. Copy me in. Copy me in on the email. Catch on meaning sort of realise or work out what's going on. He didn't catch on to, uh, you know, I didn't catch on to what he was talking about. I mean, I didn't really follow or understand what he was talking about. Uh, drop in, meaning visit. Um, I think I'll drop in tomorrow at some point, meaning I think I'll visit tomorrow at some point. But if you want to add an object, I think I'll drop in on you tomorrow. Drop in on someone. Um, and talk back Another one is another one. You know, if you imagine you're, a teacher is talking to a child uh, and, you, you know, the teacher says, do your homework. And the student says something. The kid says something like, you know, like, uh, don't tell me what to do. And the teacher says, don't talk back. Don't talk back to your teachers. OK, uh, talk back to. All right, then. Um, so uh, 
Mm -hmm. Did you catch on to the secret plan? Shall we drop in on Jeff in his new flat? Um, what do I have to do to keep ahead of the competition? Uh, the teachers hate it when Dave talks back to them. Okay, so basically, uh, cop um, uh, what is it? Check in on someone uh, to want in on something. Uh, these are phrasal verbs, and I suggest you try to learn them as complete phrases. Uh, try to learn this kind of language as a chunk of vocabulary and choose not to be distracted by the individual words, but instead see it as a whole, okay? And when you start to think about this, you, you will start to notice these patterns of verb plus little other words. You know, copy me in on, uh, talk back to him, um, you know, uh, participate in or um, take part in for example. So try to see English as lots of these little chunks of vocabulary, um, okay? For example, in this paragraph, okay, I'm just going to read out a paragraph for you um, and see if you can notice uh, the sort of phrasal verbs here and try to notice them as chunks, not as individual little words, all right? So, uh, knock, 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 a boss is entering someone's office, okay? He's entering the office, cuckoo. Uh, hello, uh, just checking in on you. Just thought I'd drop in on you just to see how you're getting on with the project. Um, really glad to see that you're working hard on this one. Um, it's exactly the sort of thing we need to do in order to keep ahead of the competition. Good work. Uh, just make sure you keep copying me in on all the email correspondence with the clients and suppliers so that I can keep up to date with all the work that you're doing while I sit in my office smoking a cigar and watching the cricket, okay? Just make sure you keep copying me in on all the emails so I can keep up uh, up to date with everything, okay? That's a sort of annoying, an annoying boss who is asking you to do all the work while he sits in his office doing nothing. So we had dr uh, checking in on you. I thought I'd drop in on you to see how you're getting on with the project. Um, you're working hard on the project. Um, it's this... Uh, what else? Uh, keep copying me in on all the emails uh, so that I can keep up to date with all the work that you're doing. Okay, then. You will see that paragraph written on the page for this episode, by the way. Um, now, this... So, there you go, Frank. That's an answer to, to your question about in on, that it's actually part of a phrasal verb, and you should try to identify uh, that as a phrasal verb, not just in on. In on doesn't mean anything. It's uh, It's want in on or copy me in on something okay um all right now uh that brings me on to uh, a phrasal verb a day okay now i haven't done an episode of a phrasal verb a day for ages it's been like about eight months or something um by the way a phrasal verb a day is my other podcast that's right i have another podcast you can find it on my website you can find it on itunes it's called a phrasal verb a day and as it stands i think there's nearly 140 uh, short episodes. Each episode is just a few minutes long and in each episode I explain a different phrasal verb in each episode, right? Um, and, you know, plenty of people are finding it really useful and I keep getting uh, comments from people saying, when are you going to do more phrasal verb episodes? The fact is I, I haven't done one for months and months and the reason for that is that it's just really hard for me to get back into the habit and because there isn't enough incentive for me to keep doing those episodes, right? Incentive, like a reason for me to do it. There just isn't enough of an incentive. Uh, I mean, incentives for things would be stuff like uh, cash rewards um, or, yeah, certain rewards are examples of an incentive, something you want to get, a reason why you would do something. And so there just isn't enough of an incentive for me to do it. Like, just saving the world by teaching phrasal verbs and making the universe a better place is just not enough of an ins of an incentive, apparently, uh, for me to keep doing those phrasal verbs. Um, partly because they're free. Anyway, I got a comment uh, today, actually, from a listener called DY. I guess those are initials from Korea. And it goes like this. Hi, I've just started listening to your phrasal verb podcast. I found that it's the perfect content to study by myself since I can use phrasal verbs in my real life right after listening to uh, your podcast. I can rather easily find written versions of uh, phrasal verb lists on the internet. But actually listening to your explanation is better for me to understand and memorize phrasal verbs. Although it's a shame that you couldn't reach your goal 
of making 365 uh, episodes. But I understand it must be very hard for you to carry on uh, doing this project without any sponsorship. I actually think this content is worth, uh, is worth paying for and you might want to publish it through another platform. Thank you again, DY from Korea. Okay, so um, thanks for the comment, DY. And um, uh, it's interesting what you said about maybe turning that into um, content that I could put on another platform. And maybe if I can find a way of monetizing a phrasal verb a day, I can continue doing it. Or maybe what I should do is make that the YouTube channel and just do a phrasal verb a day on YouTube. But again, what's the incentive for me to do that? I've got my podcast, Luke's English Podcast, and you know I've got sponsorship for that and that does bring me some money and it helps me to continue and you know I've got to be realistic I've got to try and use my time effectively I can't spend too much time on just free stuff I can't just give away my time like that anymore I mean it's just crazy really uh, I mean there was a time when I had a lot more time available to me these days I've got to be a lot more efficient I've got to try and uh, use my time more effectively and so it's I just find it very hard to justify doing a phrasal verb a day because even though episodes are very short it does take quite a lot of time to do each episode I have to create the pages on my site I've got to embed the players and do all of that technical website type stuff I have to manage the transcriptions for each one um, I have to actually sort of sit down and prepare what I'm going to say and then record it and it's taking time and I have to wonder what's in it for me. So that's a, just an explanation of what's been going on with um, with a phrasal verb a day. Now I did say, didn't I, at the beginning of this episode that I would recommend some self-study books. I'm not going to do that now because there isn't time. Sorry, there just isn't time because I'd like to spend some good time talking about some, some good books. Uh, so I will do that soon though okay I've been planning an episode that, uh, to talk about books because one of the reasons for that is because I got loads of books uh, at Christmas time and I've just got these piles of books everywhere right piles of books which I've been intending to read for ages and I, I love books right they're obviously I love books they're wonderful and what I wanted to do was go through an episode of the podcast where I just talk about some of the books that I've got lying around and tell you about them. Because there's like a, a loads of really interesting books here, like David Bowie interview books, Jack Kerouac books, uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes graphic novels, um, and a little interesting, an interesting series by Oxford University Press, uh, which is like pocket-sized books that tell you loads of really interesting things about different aspects of culture and history. So I've got loads of books to talk to you about. So maybe what I could do is uh, talk about the self-study books in that episode, the book-themed episode. So I think I, I will do that in another episode. So you'll just have to hold on for the stuff about self-study uh, books. Just at the end here then, I wanted to say uh, something about music. Um, music. I do actually have some music in the background here. So... Uh, I recently put together a Spotify playlist for listeners of Luke's English Podcast. And uh, on the Spotify playlist, you'll find loads and loads of songs that I've uh, talked about uh, in episodes of the podcast. Right from day one, like right from the earliest episodes of the podcast, I've always sort of talked about music, haven't I, in these episodes. Uh, and I've done, con you know, I've done episodes about misheard lyrics and I did episodes with members of my family talking about their favourite songs and things like that. And just over the years, I've mentioned different bits of music. And what I've done is made a, a Spotify playlist and I've put all of those songs, all of the songs I can remember ever mentioning or ever playing little extracts from, I've put them into um, this Spotify playlist. And uh, you might want to listen to it. I don't know. I just thought I'd let you know. Um, I'll probably mention this again at some point just to remind you, but you can find the uh, link to the Spotify playlist on the page for this episode. All right, then. You know what I'm going to do now? Um, we've got a few minutes at the end. I'm going to play the guitar because I haven't played uh, any music on Luke's English Podcast for ages. Now, if you don't like... Um, if you don't like music and if you don't want to see me singing and playing the guitar, now is the time to stop, okay? just I just want to kind of 
warn you that I'm not like the greatest guitarist or singer in the world, but sometimes it's nice to, to, to play some music. Someone left a comment to me lately saying, when are you gonna sing a song for us again? I think it was like a comment saying, telling me, because I asked people, do you listen to the end of every episode? And someone recently sent me a comment saying, I do listen to the end of every episode because there's a chance that you will sing at the end. I used to sing songs occasionally at the end of episodes, but I haven't done it for a long time. So I thought I'd just do that again here. So, all right, I'm now gonna go and get the guitar and then play a song for you. All right, so just give me a second. You can listen to my brother, my brother's music. This is a track that my brother produced a few years ago, and that is my cousin Oliver on the guitar, by the way. I'm just trying to get the camera set up so that everyone can actually see what I'm doing. All right then. Okay. Right, I'll turn that off. So the, the piece of music I'm gonna to play to you is um, a track that I've been playing on the guitar recently and it's by The Flaming Lips and it's called Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots Part One. And um, this, the, the lyrics to this song seem to be about a Japanese girl called Yoshimi who um, has, trained to, has trained in karate in order to fight against uh, uh, an army of evil robots. So it's, it seems to be some sort of like science fiction story about a girl fighting against uh, an army of evil robots, which sounds good to me. That's the kind of thing that I like. But I don't really know what it's all about. Maybe it's, it is a little kind of science fiction story or maybe it's a, a metaphor for something else. Anyway, I think it's just a cute little, it's a cute song. And so that's what I'm going to play for you right here at the end of the episode. Uh, and I please please forgive me for my for my guitar playing skills and my uh, my singing ability as well. Uh, but I'll I'll give it my best shot. You can find the lyrics to this song. You can find the lyrics to this song on the page for this episode on the website. Yoshimi. Let me start that again. Oh my god! What are you doing? I messed it up. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Yashimi. She's a black belt in karate Working for the city She has to discipline her body Cause she knows that It's demanding To defeat those evil machines Know that she can beat them Oh Yoshimi They don't believe me But you won't let those robots defeat me Yoshimi They don't believe me But you won't let those robots eat me
Those evil natured robots They're programmed to destroy us She's gotta be strong to fight them So she's taking lots of vitamins Cause she knows that It'd be tragic If those evil robots win Know that she can beat them Oh Yoshimi They don't believe me But you won't let those robots defeat me Yoshimi They don't believe me But you won't let those robots eat me Okay, that's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening. I'll speak to you again on the podcast soon. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Ow, my fingers hurt. I've got blisters on my fingers. <laughs>